Well, I was really hoping to get in like a quick 9 or 18. I'm so glad you were free. Thanks for coming along. Yeah, absolutely. So how are you feeling? We're kind of getting into 2018. How are you feeling about your start to the year so far? So far, so good. Uh, always nice starting in the Bahamas and in Australia. So, yeah. um, <laughs> can't complain. Can't complain about that, no way. And yeah, happy to be back stateside and definitely in full swing and ready for the summer. So last year, it had been a bit, a bit of a wait. You went seven years between wins. That is incredible. How are you feeling to get back into the winner's circle? It was a blast. Um, unexpected, definitely, but um, yeah, it was so much fun. And it was weird at the start of the week, uh, kind of had a really unusual routine going. I played Aaron Hills on the Monday with oh, my cool. husband and Dory Carter and Amelia Lewis, uh -huh. which I never play on a Monday. That's usually my day off. But of all places but to do it for, I mean, Aaron like, Hills, hey, that's yeah, great. You yeah, know? we were driving on the way up to Wisconsin. And I was like, yeah, let's let's play it. Yeah. And it was awesome. Um, oh, I bet. And played well. And Tuesday, yeah, played a practice round out of the Thornberry Creek and loved the golf course uh -huh. and just feeling good about the whole week. And yeah, all fell into place kind of nicely. So I think I surprised a few people too, but um, maybe made a few people jump off the couch when they were watching. <laughs> but yeah. Good times. Why did you surprise even yourself? You said you thought it was unexpected. Well, I am a veteran out here yeah. now on tour, so um, to keep up with these young guns is <laughs> getting harder and harder. And um, yeah, I mean, I, after it had been seven years too, I mean, you you don't doubt yourself, but because um, you're working hard, and you, right. you still think you can do it. But I guess there's that element of you know how much harder it is. And, right. Right. Yeah. There. 144 girls that tee it up most weeks and it's just not easy to win. Yeah. Well, you kept it rolling. I mean, you had a fourth place finish in Australia earlier this year, which is mm -hmm. great. What do you think it has kind of clicked for you now at this stage in your career? It's like the sec second coming of Catherine Kirk. Uh, well, my, my, old, my game all around is just better. So mm -hmm. I started working with a new coach out in California about mm, a little over two and a half years ago. And okay. So finally those swing changes are kicking in and then just feel more comfortable with my short game and I mean, a lot of the time it comes down to putting too. And mm -hmm. I went to, back to being a kid um, with my putting about a year ago. So that's been a What does that entail? Too. Less thinking, yeah. just reacting, looking right. at the hole. I mean, if you watch any kid when they're out on a putting green yep. or in, on the golf course, um, they're just natural and they don't overanalyze their stroke or right. the putt. They just look at the hole and knock it in. Yeah. Obviously, we can hear from your accent. You're from Australia. But then you went to school in California at Pepperdine. Yep. Now you live in Wichita, of all places. What is this transition be like? Do you do you have a favorite place that you've liked living? I mean, you've been like all over. I love the Midwest just because it's so laid back. Uh -huh. um, reminds me of home where I grew up, really, in terms of the pace of life and just the people. Okay. And I know everyone's like, you went from like paradise in Australia because <laughs> I grew up on the beach uh -huh. to Malibu, California, yeah. and Kansas. Like, what are you thinking? <laughs> but um, if people ever go to Kansas, they understand why. So yeah. And my husband's from there, so there's a good reason to stay. You have to love it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what else do you like to do when you're away from the course? What do you get into? I like to cook, but I'm not very good. Okay. Um, like more like meals or do you more get into like desserts and baking and stuff uh, like that? More meals, but okay. I like to bake too because I have a sweet tooth. Oh, me but too. I don't do a lot of that. So um, yeah, we try and eat healthy as <laughs> possible. But um, my husband loves to golf. So we actually play a lot of golf. Oh, that's awesome. Weeks, yeah. That's great. Um, but we like to fish too. If we can squeeze in a hike, depending upon where we are, we like to do that. And, we're kind of foodies as well, so we're yeah. on, when we're on the road, we're always up to fr trying a new kind of restaurant or a hole in the wall yeah. and kind of getting a fun experience there. Yeah, you sound like a good group to hang out with. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you still involved with Golf for Africa? I know you've done some work with them as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah talk so about that. was on the, well, let's see, went down to Africa for the first time in 07, and that wow. was, what that was, that was that kind like? of a, a game changer for me. Oh, I bet. Um, Julie Inkster was on the trip, Riley Rankin, obviously Betsy King. Mm -hmm. um, and Renee Powell. So oh, we awesome. had an amazing group yeah. of LPJ players that went down. And Renee had actually been there like 26 or 27 times before. Oh my gosh, wow. Yeah, and, Be and Betsy, when she went in 06, she came back a different person. And that was kind of what got me intrigued by it. Yeah. And, um, just loved the work that World Vision was doing down mm -hmm. there and um, really believed in, in helping out. Because, I mean, in Australia, in the US, if people have a need, they always have a place to go, whether it be to get food or shelter right. or medical treatment. So. In Africa, unfortunately, a lot of the countries, they don't have any resources for their people. So right. that was that was the easy kind of decision to get involved there. And oh, yeah. We built a medical clinic first off. Oh, and wow. We've done homes with Habitat for Humanity mm -hmm. down there, which was great. That's awesome. Um, we do uh, child sponsorships. 
Aww. We've done backpacks for kids, and then more recently we're building water wells in Zambia. Um, it costs about $15,000 to drill a well, wow. and World Vision has had the, the biggest success rate with their water wells down there. Uh -huh. um, and it really is a community-driven thing. They Before they're entitled, or I shouldn't say entitled, before they're allowed a, a well, um, they have to raise money as a, as a village, okay. and they have to build like pit latrines, showers, um, proper food kind of storage areas, uh -huh. and just make sure that they're all on the same page in terms of sanitation and hygiene. Mm -hmm. um, so that it teaches them like community, teamwork, and responsibility, and, mm -hmm. and they've really done an amazing job with um, even in the schools, like educating the kids about washing their hands before they eat, and that, before and after yeah. they go to the bathroom, that sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, it's changing lives definitely yeah. down there. And I think it's only like, I mean, for $50, you can essentially provide someone with clean water for a lifetime wow. down there. That's that's how far a dollar or $50 goes. Oh my so, gosh, that's incredible. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever get to go back? Would you go back? Yeah, so Tom and I went in 2014, okay. and we'd go again in a heartbeat. It's just obviously figuring out schedule-wise yeah. and, um, and project-wise, but I mean, we know that all the people down there are doing all the good work and uh, we've seen what goes on behind the scenes. So we we don't need to go back, but um, it's certainly humbling to meet some of the folks that are helping out and also meet the, the villagers because they're so appreciative of, of what they what they get. Yeah, that's so incredible. Yeah, I know I had seen some of you said that golf is not who I am, but it's what I do. Mm -hmm. And that obviously is a huge testament to that because now you've got this platform to do awesome things like that. For sure, yeah. Yeah, I mean, golf is a, we're, we're very privileged. We're very blessed to be able to do this for a living. And I think not only do I want to leave the game better than what I found it, I want to leave the communities that I'm in and then potentially, I mean, other places in the world better. So, I mean, we, we are a global tour, so. Yeah. Um, to raise awareness for other countries in need and it's yeah I think it's important yeah well how do you want to leave this year what's your big goal for 2018 what's on your radar oh it's always nice to win so yeah. um, get like I said it's getting harder to do but I think that's what we're all kind of striving for and working hard for but um, I've never had two wins in a year that'd be kind of fun that would be awesome yeah. well you're on the right track we'll, for we'll sure. try and get that first one yeah <laughs> Minor detail, minor yeah. detail. <laughs> well, thanks for coming along. I appreciate you cruising with Absolutely. me. We, we obviously didn't make it to any golf, but at least it was fun to be able to, you know, just catch up and, and find yeah, out what sure. you've been up to. And uh, hey, in case you get hungry later, here's uh, Incrustables for the Road. Perfect. This is like the perfect golf snack right here. <laughs> it is, Thank totally. You. Yeah. <laughs> it sort of matches you, too. It does, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs>